this is Christina here at the Farmington Libraries. For today's maker activity, we will be doing soap felting. So you can get your kit. If you don't have a kit and you're following along at home, you can get the following materials. You will need a bar of soap, any kind, it's fine. Um, you will need wool roving. Um, you can get it in one color or a variety of colors, depending on how you want it to look. And you will also need um, nylon or a stocking. What we use is a knee-high stocking, it works really well. So go ahead and get your materials and let's get started. Okay, so today we're doing our soap felting. And um, I'm all set up in my sink. I have a bowl here that's already filled with hot water. So you want it hot, like pretty much as hot as your little hands can stand. Um, so it's hot water and you know, if you have a sink, just you could plug it up too if you wanted to do that. Um, but it's better than wasting all the running water. We also have our, our roving over here and roving is kind of like wool before they do anything into it, before they spin it into yarn or anything like that. So it's kind of raw in a sense. So you can see like all the different kinds and how it's very thin and, and you could just kind of pull it apart. I have my bar of soap here. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, I tried to get you guys some nice little soap, but um, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's all whatever you like. And so I'm going to take this. I think this is really pretty. And you'll see that it's very thick. So you want to pull it apart so you have a nice thin layer and also so that it's an even thickness. So you just kind of start gently tugging, pulling apart. You also will need, um, I included a knee high in the kit, a knee high stocking. Um, if you don't, if you're following along at home and you don't have that, you can, you can get a knee high or if you have an old pair of uh, pantyhose, you can just cut off the the foot of it. Still kind of pulling. So I'm going to actually, this is a very long piece, so I'm going to kind of pull it in half. You don't want to cut it. Um, you want to just pull it apart. So what we want to do is you want to layer this twice. I've actually think it's better if you get it a little wet so it'll stick. So you want to take it and you can see that, that the roving is going this way. So you'll want to wrap it like this. And I, I like that it's a little wet because then it will stick. And then you kind of just want to cover it up and just wet it to stick it down. You can still see I have some soap coming through. So my roving is going this way, the fibers. And now I wanna take another thin layer and I wanna do it the opposite way. And so I'm pretty new to this, but um, I've learned from some instruction that um, it's good to have the fibers going in opposite directions because it makes the felting process um, it makes the, the the roving interlock better for the felting process. So I'm just kind of tucking it all together. Um, <clears throat> the, it's funny, like people think that it's like a weird thing to take soap and wrap it in, a, in material, but um, actually has some benefits. You'll feel for yourself that it's super soft. Okay, as I'm talking, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my stocking. I'm gonna put my hand all the way through. And then I'm going to use my hand to grab and then pull through. So it's very soft. It actually preserves the soap pretty well. Um, like if you ever have your soap in a soap dish, you see it get like it's all mushy. So it's good in that it preserves the soap that way. And it's actually like gently exfoliating the way a washcloth would. Um, and it's really fun if you're in a bath. So it's just like really nice and indulgent and it'd be really good for kids in the bath, especially in the winter. So now that we have all of our areas covered, it's pretty tightly on there. Um, we're gonna start dipping. And I'm just gonna let the bubbles come up. And then we're gonna start rubbing. And when you rub, when you rub the felt 
into the soap. Okay, I got all that bubbles out. And then I squeeze and then you just kind of rub it. And it's, what it's doing is it's agitating it. And so it's making those fibers felt together. And you will feel the soap come through. That's good, that's what it's supposed to do. It takes a while to do its job. It's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes of dipping, rubbing, squeezing. And so we just, you kind of feel it start to firm up. Feel it start to stick to each other and stick to the soap. This might be hard on some winter hands, I know, but the good thing is we all need to do a lot of hand washing, so I guess it couldn't hurt. Just use some nice, some nice hand lotion after. So I'm just rubbing which is good to have the nylon because the nylon helps keep everything kind of locked in place. So we'll have to see if people like this craft. If you do, it's definitely something we can do again. Um, you'll have to let me know what you think. And if you have ideas for our maker programs, you can just let me know. Um, I like to come up with some good ideas. I usually say, you know, I'm not, I'm not that artistic, but I'm good at crafts. So I feel like if I could do crafts, I think most people could do crafts because I keep it on a, like a beginner basis. But uh, that's so that's that's the way I try to think about it, about what kind of crafts we can do, and um, if there's something that you guys would like me to try, let me know and I can look into it. It's always good to know what people are interested in. So I'm just still rubbing. And I, I heard somebody comment um, in learning about soap felting that, you know, is this really worth the process because you're losing a lot of soap? You're not really losing that much soap, honestly. I think you're only losing like a little bit, maybe 10%. Oh, definitely want to start off with a big full bar. So you just kind of want to keep dipping, rubbing, trying to make it stick. Um, I'm going to pull this out and see, because I feel like there's a spot where it's not sticking. So maybe I can rewrap it a little. It already looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm just kind of squeezing to get the water out so I can see where the extra, okay, so like I can see here, like I kind of have a little bunched up extra fabric, so maybe, maybe just kind of folded it on itself a little bit better. I'm sure if I'm having this issue, you guys probably are too, so I'm just gonna give you some little tips, so. There, now I'm gonna rewrap it, and now I'm gonna keep going. So I, t I just um, used one color for this, but you could do it um, in a nice stripe variety. Um, you can do it making like a pattern. I kind of just stuck to the basics because this is like our first time doing this. Um, but you can definitely see how you could um, get a little more complicated with it. And you can kind of feel it like getting tighter and becoming a cohesive piece. So you want to make sure you get all edges, not just, you know, not just this main part. You want to get the sides, the edges. Oh, 
lot of soapy water. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dump this water. I'm actually gonna get a little bit more hot water because my water's cooled down and it's very soapy. And I think a little bit more of the hot water would help the agitation process just a little because the heat does help those fibers. If you've ever made like felted dryer balls, um, you know how people will use dryer balls um, instead of uh, dryer sheets. When you make felted dryer balls, I haven't done this, but I, you know, I've seen a lot of videos about people who have. They, they also do that where they use a lot of heat in the dryer and hot water to help agitate that. That might be a fun project to do if people are interested. All right. This is feeling really good. It's feeling like one solid piece. So I'm gonna unwrap it. Of course, I'm a little, it's a little clumsy now. <laughs> yeah, I worked this thing over pretty good. So now you wanna give a final rinse in some cold. So I'm gonna squeeze this out remove this. I'm going to run so so now you want to run a little cold water over it. The cold water kind of set it a little. So I'm kind of just squeezing the suds out and and squeezing the felt to the soap. Okay. So obviously there is a bar of soap in here so you're not going to it's not going to be completely free of um Suds, but you can see how it's it's really sucked to the to the soap, and you can see how it's not just loose fibers; it's it's um, all melded together. So now I um, leave this to dry somewhere, um, put it on a on a little towel, and leave it to dry for I would probably say like two or three days. Um, you know, flip it over occasionally so that the whole thing gets a chance to dry and then come back and we'll look at our beautiful project. Okay, so we have our completed felted soap and you can even see how mine was a concave bar of soap and how closely it stuck. It feels really nice and really solid. There's no doubt in my mind that it's felted and that it's ready to go. So if at this point yours has dried and it still doesn't feel quite right and like almost like shrink wrap to your soap, you can repeat the process <clears throat> that we went through where you um, dunk it in the hot water, agitate it, and then let it dry. Go ahead and repeat that if you're not confident in your final step. So something else that I want to try, we did soap felting and now we're going to try needle felting. So this is a felting needle. I've included it for you. Um, if you kind of look at it in light, you can see there's like little marks. There's like little tiny barbs almost. And this is like a special kind of needle that will help the felt. We're going to use this felt and we're going to pin it into this, into this felt that's already established. So we're gonna take our little like stencil and we're gonna put it over here. I'm just kind of taping it. You can, or you don't have to. And we're gonna kind of pull this thin. And kind of spread it out a little. I might not even need this much. You can add extra later if you want it. So I'm going to kind of put it on here. And I'm going to start felting it. So you just kind of start You're just poking and poking until this white roving connects into the blue felt that's already there. And we're using this stencil so that we can make an outline of a heart.
Some people use thimbles. I am not, but just try to be careful. This is why my programs are all adult programs, just because I'm assuming you can be careful and be safe. So you can see it's already starting to stick. So I'm kind of going in sideways a little instead of just up and down, because up and down you're gonna get the soap. So I'm kind of doing it a little sideways, which is getting those barbs right into that, <clears throat> right into that blue felt that we had. So basically you're just using this felting needle to tack this down. And it takes a while, but it's kind of a nice, peaceful process, so. And I'm just kind of folding over the excess a little bit and then tacking that down too. Um, I've seen some people do this and they do it really fast, but I'm new, so I'm going very slow and careful, and I would recommend that you go slow and carefully too, because this needle is pretty sharp. So I'm just following the outline of my stencil, and I keep pulling it back to see where the outline is. So I thought a heart would be a simple shape that would be really great because this is right around Valentine's Day. So if you wanted to give it to someone as a nice little gift, you could. And you can see I'm, <clears throat> I'm using white for my heart on top of blue. So it doesn't have to be your traditional like pink or red. So basically this is helping those fibers lock together. The barb is inserting it and locking them in. And like I said, I'm going more sideways than straight up and down. And I'm just kind of fold this over a little too. I probably used a little too much, but like I said, this is my first time too. So I'll know not to give you too much when I make your kits up. And you don't just want to do the outline of it, you want to do this entire middle part too. And just keep moving it around. Okay, so I finished this, and you can see it's kind of a rough looking heart, um, but if you look at the side and you try to pull it up, you can see it's clearly attached. This is something that you almost can't spend too much time on. Um, you know, if you're concerned, um, just keep tacking it and tacking it down. Make sure you're tacking the sides. Um, and you know just spend as much time as you need on it but i think this came out really cute i think this is a great first project for us maybe we can try it again in the future with um, a little bit more um, complexity in the design but i think this is something that came out really great with very little effort so i hope you enjoy this and if you want to share your posts 
um, so that we can post it on um, social media. If you have any pictures, you can send it to F L R E F at Farmington Libraries dot org. And just let us know if it's okay to share your name and a photo of your work because we love sharing um, the fun things that we're working on here at the Farmington Libraries. So I hope you enjoyed this program and stay tuned for more.